So take a quick look at Woody first, because you already know Buzz. I don't really have to go into too much detail about Buzz. I've done that in my starting video. Um, and you can read him easily, and you probably have him. So you know a little bit about Buzz. So let's talk about Woody. Woody's got a whole bunch of text here, and we're going to start from the beginning and work our way up. Woody's basic. Deal damage to target opponent. Arbitrary 45% chance, so not quite half the time, just almost. Inflict two turns of slow. For a basic, I, I personally prefer any basic that also gives a debuff or harmful effect. So anytime the basic has a chance to do something like slow, defense down, stun, it immediately has a higher value to me than if it's just more damage, especially with how he's going to work on his team. Uh, moving into his ultimate, uh, grant all teammates, because I don't know why it's placed here. They're not specials. You can't have two specials. That's silly. Uh, grant all teammates haste for one turns. Huge. This is pretty much all Woody's kit. Uh, every teammate just speeds up. I think it's 30% speed up. 30% uh, chance to gain critical power up for one turns. Basically, if they crit, they do more damage. That's it. Uh, it's a very good buff, and you get that at level 2. As with all things, I think level 2-ing the ability is the most important. You shouldn't worry too much about spending these uh, level 3 upgrades. Level 2 usually does enough for most spells. These are kind of reserved for characters that you're using as your main team or for a specific purpose. But this is one of the best things about Woody. This alone might make Woody an overall decent character to add to any team because of the haste, but... As we've determined by using the Kingdom Team, speed does matter. So, pretty decent ability here. As for Snake and Mabu, very simple. Deal damage, inflict vulnerable. Vulnerable is a status effect that says the next attack on this target will crit. If you set it up right, very big damage coming up. Especially because the previous turn, Woody was able to give everybody crit up chance. So, it kind of works very well together. If Jess is a teammate, there's a chance she can also assist. You're familiar with this from the Aladdin Jasmine or from Buzz calling Woody on his special. More or less the exact same thing. No major notes on how this works, but pretty cool ability overall. Moving into his first passive, send the troops. Whenever a teammate takes damage, there's a 30% chance on cooldown, you can see right here, for this character to restore some amount of health three times to the teammate who received damage. So this is about... 600 to 700 health based on crits or whatever get 25 percent extra health if the teammate is a toy story character so cool thing is he's not bad outside of his team with all of his kit and everything he does he's not a damage dealer he's a utility character but he's got a little bit of a heal like ja he's actually very similar to jasmine uh in entirety of kit but the more Toy Story characters, the more on his team he is, the better overall he gets because they're obviously designed to work together. Pretty decent. Uh, this will just increase the heal, but it is a passive and it's on a basic two turn cooldown, so you can expect this to happen after every other turn he takes, give or take. This is his leadership ability, uh, and you will use this because teammates gain bonus tenacity or the ability to resist harmful effects. If they're Toy Story teammates, they get 14% tenacity. It is very hard to stick debuffs on Toy Story, uh, especially in Club War, when you have them placed on defense, or if you're going into a team that you know the spells are going to be a problem, like Dumbo or Infinity Side of Die. This has a chance of just helping them resist all of it, and that's huge. So while you get into teams like Downtown Villains with Demona, where there's a lot of debuffs, this kind of counters the potency buff from leadership abilities like Dr. Facilier if you're using the full Toy Story team. Outside of that, this isn't really a leadership ability and you wouldn't be using him as the leader. He's not a better leadership ability than a character like Ariel on Generic Heroes or Pocahontas on pretty much any team Pocahontas is on. Other than that, Woody is pretty basic character. Uh, you don't really get much out of him until you look at what the rest of the characters in this team do. So let's take a quick look at Jesse. Jesse's basic. Deal damage, some amount, uh, one to three times to random opponents. Just hit, you know, up to three random people. 50% chance to defense down for two turns with each attack. Again, like I said, 
Not only does it hit one person with a chance to give a harmful effect, it can hit three different people and give six harmful effects. Like, sounds good. Sounds overall like a pretty solid ability. Plus, because of how assist works, there's a chance that if Woody or someone calls an assist from her, that character gets defense down. Good basic, no real notes on it. I don't really stress on basics too much because basics tend to only matter when you decide to use them or they're the last ditch effort and they're not the fun. They're not the spunk or the pizzazz of a character. When you want to get into a little bit of that, we have inspiration. Grant target teammate shield, which is over health. It's a health bar on top of the health bar. Worth 10% of this character's max health plus 10% of the target's missing health. So if you pick a very high health target, uh, this is going to be a very, very big shield they get. If you pick a very low health target, um, overall health. They're, they're not going to get too much of a shield, but it might be enough to make them survive one attack. Grant evasion. That huge deal. They're gonna The next attack that hits them is going to dodge. This is a great uh, saving ability, and you can kind of tell she's a support character immediately. If the target teammate is Toy Story, also grant undefeatable. Undefeatable means the next time they would perish in a fight, they do not. Very simple. Be a little careful with this because with the uh, advent of the Iago spell that steals buffs, you may end up giving the entire other team undefeatable, but that's just something you learn when you play the game. This is absolutely phenomenal to make sure that a target teammate on your team cannot be destroyed for one turn with a little bit of health, a little bit of shield, and evasion. This is like, save my friend at any cost. 30% chance to grant unstoppable for two turns. Unstoppable is weird. Unstoppable says you cannot receive harmful effects. So all of that extra potency or tenacity that your team gets or that the opponents may get from an effect, doesn't matter. Unstoppable cannot be affected. It's harmful effect immunity. So. This is just keep one character safe for one or two turns, at least, because of the invasion. Pretty cool ability overall. I wouldn't necessarily recommend investing in the shield amount right now, but she's a good character, helpful to her team, pretty fun support character. Deal a small amount of damage to target opponent and all flanking opponents. Remember, flanking is the row that they are on, so either the front three, the back two, or any summons across the line. Deal 50% bonus damage to each target if they are affected by stun. Well, Buzz has a stun, Woody does not have a stun, and she does not have a stun. So, there's a chance that you can target a different character and get a little bit extra damage if Buzz happened to stun them. You kind of might want to play around with that, but there's more information about how you're going to put stuns on with this team. We'll get into that when we check out Bo Peep. Overall, it's just a damaging attack. Pretty solid altogether. Any teammate applying a harmful or helpful effect 15 percent chance to increase this character's speed meter by 10 percent we've talked about this before speed is ridiculous so anything that helps you get speed or helps your opponent lose speed crazy this on any time any of your teammates apply a helpful effect to themselves or a harmful effect to your opponent there's a chance their speed meter is going to go up by 10. if that character is a toy story character they get 15% bonus chance, so it's a solid 30% chance. Since you can already see all of the characters' basics have a chance of putting debuffs on people, Buzz, I believe both of his abilities have a chance of putting a debuff on people, or all of them. Yeah, there's a pretty good chance that every time someone takes a turn, they're gonna get a little bit extra speed meter, which is gonna help them be faster and be a little bit more competitive. As we know, speed is one of the most important things in these kind of games, the more turns you get, the less opponent turns you have to worry about, so you should be okay. And that's it for Jesse. You can sell, she's not gonna carry her team, but specifically on her team, she is a very viable support character. She has a couple of good abilities for outside of Toy Story team, but you're probably not gonna use her too much outside. Moving into the chase character, we have Bo Peep. Bo Peep also has a leadership ability. That's probably going to be a little bit more useful than Woody's more often than not. So let's see what it is at the end after we look at her other abilities. Why would I start with that? Uh, Bo Peep 
Deal damage, sure. 50% chance to inflict offense down for one turn if this character is affected by defense up. Weird, right? Like If she has defense up, she might inflict offense down, but again, it's a basic, should be fine. No real notes, the damage on it is, when you, when you look at it on a character that's not unlocked, you see uh, what the number is at its base level. Usually this number could be anywhere from 21 to 48. So the higher this number is at base level, the more you know this is gonna scale with your level. It kind of just adds one every time. So she's gonna do a pretty decent chunk of damage when she's unlocked. Uh, her special is Giggle. Sorry, I just giggled because Polly Pocket. Perform the following on target teammate. Assign Officer Giggle McDimples, grant taunt for one turn. So you can choose one character to have taunt. Officer Giggle McDimples, grant defense up indefinitely to the affected teammate until Giggle is directed to a different teammate or defense up is otherwise removed. You can basically move the taunt character to whomever has the most health or whomever you want them to target. This could be not only a character, but a summoned character. Uh, it is adorable. Uh, I wish I could show you gameplay of it right now, but I might have to do that a little bit later on stream. Uh, it is very fun, and because it's ready on turn one and available, you can start making sure the characters are targeting the people you want them to target, either a very early access to Jesse because she doesn't really need to work, or even Bo Peep herself because she's relatively tanky. Great ability. Stay out of my way. This is very simple. Deal flanking damage. That's it. 20% chance to inflict stun. Now we start seeing what all the stun was about. Now we start seeing what Jesse and Buzz, now we start seeing what all of these debuffs do. Every single member of the Toy Story character has very high impact debuffs on their special abilities. This is a four turn cooldown, so you only get to use it once per battle usually, but pretty decent chance, especially when you upgrade it to about 35% chance to stun a bunch of people for one turn kind of sets it up so that if you use Jesse and her ability back to back, you're going to do a lot of damage to that flanking row. And since a lot of fights do come down to how much AOE or flanking damage you can do, you can already start seeing how this team is going to work together when they're, when they're all said and done. Her first passive, uh, two turn cooldown, so it doesn't happen all the time, but whenever she receives damage, 5 to 50% chance to restore 72 health to this character, or arbitrary amount of health. That's actually a pretty decent chunk of health, so it is a very big heal later on. If Woody is a teammate, his speed goes up by 30%. Chance to activate is increased the lower health this character is. So it says 5 to 50. It's not a random number in between there. It starts off at 5 if, you know, you don't have any damage on you, but since you received damage, you had a little. And if you get to about 50% health, you probably have closer to a 50% chance to heal. So it's kind of one of those things where it's probably not going to waste early, like Aladdin's heal. Uh, it's going to be used when they get to about 75 or 50% health and give a pretty decent heal themselves, as well as give Woody the chance to kind of throw up the hastes or maybe tell Giggles to go somewhere else. Uh, really good if you lead off with Giggles on Bo Peep, because at some point in these attacks that she takes, she's likely to also proc her heal and give her a little bit more sustain, but depends on the comp, obviously. Good ability. Also gain harmful immunity for two turns. It's exactly what it sounds like. Can't get harmful effects. This is the leadership ability, and this is the obvious one. Teammates gain 8% bonus offense. This is great no matter who, what team she's on. 8% more damage is 8% more damage. In the same way that if Sean Yu wasn't just kingdom characters gaining 8% speed, but all characters gain 8% speed, he'd be almost forever the best character in the game. This is just a flat 8% bonus offense. Toy Story teammates gain 20% bonus offense. Toy Story does not seem like they were balanced around not having good damage so that this matters. So when characters like Buzz, Zerg, and Jesse get this 20% bonus offense, especially when they're at higher gear tiers and higher star levels, they hurt. They hurt a lot. 
And when you start looking at the spells from the Toy Story campaign, you get a really good idea of what this extra bonus offense the Toy Story team is going to get through. So let's take a quick look at the spells. Starting off with Duke Kaboom. Duke Kaboom is awesome. Duke Kaboom does eight different poses. They could be anything. You're going to see all of them. He does them in slow motion when you use him. He is great. Duke Kaboom does arbitrary amount of damage uh, to target and the adjacent targets. Remember, adjacent is anyone that's within one square of the target. So if there's just the five characters, you can only ever hit three. If there are summons or something like that, if it's a PvE fight, you can technically hit about six characters. Uh, inflict vulnerable on the target of the attack. And there's a chance to inflict vulnerable on anyone else who's hit by it. It's not one chance to give it to everybody. Each one has a 25% chance, so it's possible all of them get it, none of them get it, half of them get it, but realistically, probably about a quarter of them will get it. The vulnerable, of course, makes the next attack guaranteed to crit. It also improves the chance of a debuff from sticking, but that is that is what it is. It's really just about the damage for Duke Kaboom. He doesn't... You know, he scales a little bit at level 2. There's a 50% chance that they become affected at level four it's a 75 percent chance the problem is an aoe damage even on this team while good it's really only good for pve stuff you don't need it against pvp or against curated teams like in sorcerer's tournament or club war but it is a good spell especially against weaker opponents and it'll help you in the early game especially progressing through campaigns not overall the best but one of the coolest spells awesome and again thank you keanu reeves the second spell, and what I believe to be one of the best spells in the game, Bucket of Toy Soldiers. You make a summon of Toy Soldiers wherever you choose. Uh, basically, anytime anyone basics, this character also attacks. It attacks for a lot. A lot, a lot. More often than not, it attacks for more damage than the character basic who did the original attack. It has a pretty decent chunk of health, so it doesn't just go away. They can't just hit it once. It usually takes quite a few hits more hits than say trigger or a summon character like raja so it's around for a little bit also a great target for the taunt if you just want to save your characters because you can always resummon this it counts towards your magic when it uh, gets destroyed so by all means let them destroy it and it does just arbitrarily attack sometimes it enters itself in the turn meter and it just chooses whoever the last target was so good damage happens on assist so when you start basicing absolutely great ability if assisting woody assist the second time now you can start thinking well what am i going to do when i have woody in this character you're going to try to attack as often as you can with woody there are little tricks you can use you can use Pan Shadow to clone Woody because Woody still is called Woody. So then both of them trigger Toy Soldier and you just have a whole bunch of Toy Soldier attacks. Until you unlock Toy Soldier, you don't quite know how much damage he does. He does a lot of damage. So if the only thing you get out of this event is Toy Soldier, congratulations. You're going to have a really good time in PvP Arena, in a lot of club dungeons, in Club War. Great spell overall, probably one of the top spells still even after my first initial spell review and probably going to stay one of the top spells in the game the only other spell you get is also really cool it's called wild imagination and they're adorable i don't like the fact that they're not handcuffed together but if you haven't seen the movie yet please watch the movie deal arbitrary damage to target opponent and all flanking opponents just just flanking doesn't hit everybody just a row so it loses a little bit inflict heal block for two turns this is crazy there are some characters and some teams that rely so heavily on heals whether it be through spells characters like dr facilier ariel even what you saw with this with the other toy story team woody heal block can prevent teams that are planning to sustain you from being able to sustain you. That's it. Just on its own, great. At level two, continuous damage for two turns, or we call them burns or bleed stacks. They're just gonna take more damage. So not only can they not heal themselves through this, 
they're going to take additional damage. And then as you progress, it just does a little bit more damage and adds to the duration of heal block. I think right around level two is where the spell really starts to shine. Everything else just makes it a little bit stronger. Uh, this is a very situational spell. You tend to see this more in PvP arena and sorcerer's tournament defense based on what your team is and what you expect to be fought by or fighting where it goes. Uh, is it great? Yeah, this is a great utility spell. I wouldn't set it and forget it. I wouldn't just say I've unlocked this spell and now I'm going to win. It doesn't do that much damage. It only does target opponent and all flanking opponents. The heal block is good, but if your opponents were never gonna heal anyway, then it doesn't actually matter. It's just basically a slightly better or worse meteor, depending on what your opinion is. Splash Mountain, Dumbo, etc. It It's good spell. Uh, you won't regret having it, and it's gonna come in handy in a lot of your fights, but it doesn't do what like Bucket of Soldiers does, so. Don't go out of your way for it, and it's not important if you miss it on your first pass. Even if you go into a fight and someone does land heal blocks on you, you'll notice that the heal blocks really didn't make too much a difference because a lot of these fights don't really come down to healing unless the team is specifically designed. So it counters one or two teams but it as a spell, which is great, but it doesn't really help you win against teams that are just trying to beat your face in. So. Not one of the top spells in the game, but definitely fun when if you can get it. Oh, and it hap the fact that it happens to come when you unlock Bo Peep, incredibly useful. Now, let's talk about the team. So, the Toy Story team is obviously these five characters with the Toy Story tag. Uh, Zerg is currently not available unless you get super duper lucky in an ultimate orb or... That's it. Super duper lucky. So we can only really look at the four characters that are currently available in the game first and then just mention that, you know, the best single target damage dealer in the game might work well with them because he gets more damage. Where we can we use these characters? As far as a PvP arena team, uh, as with all things, teams that have synergies tend to be better than teams that don't which is why when you fight up against bots in PvP Arena, as you probably have figured out, those are the guys that have Yzma and Kronk, Gaston, Hook, One Aladdin, No Jasmine, Sully, the, the starting characters, the characters that are very easy to come by. They'll have them at high level, but low star, or high star, but low level. They're mediocre characters, and because of that, you're going to find a pretty decent amount of success when you use this team together. They work very well. They feed into each other's abilities. They do have boosted damage. Buzz is a great damage dealer, but again, he's single target. Woody is single target, but because of toy soldiers, you can get a lot of extra damage out of his basics. Jesse and Bo Peep are flanking. No one really does a ton of AOE damage unless they have a lot of investment, unless they're all geared tier 5 or higher, at least, unless you, unless you have very high stars on them. So, for the average player, if you end up with a team very similar to what mine looks like, we'll say the, they're all going to be 4-star, right? Like Bo Peep, and they're all going to be roughly 4-star. This is not a team that's going to be... This is not a meta team. This is not a team that's going to carry you through the campaign, necessarily. This is not a team that's going to uh, put you at the top of your Sorcerer's Tournament pool, regardless of, of, of how highly invested and how cool they look together. This is more or less a Club War team. So because Club War is going to just over time become stronger versions of teams that you see, you should be prepared and not only where to use it on offense, but where to use it on defense. Off the top, it's very easy to imagine that this team, one, will obviously beat up any characters that don't really have teamwork on them. So a bunch, a team of ra five random characters that are a little stronger, this team will be able to beat. But if you start seeing teams like the Kingdom team, uh, I would stay away. The extra damage you have, th this team is granted, doesn't really matter because their speed is not going to match. Like, they're just always going to be faster than you. The Aladdin team itself, you know, there's not too many debuffs, but you have a chance. 
at be- beating an Aladdin team, especially if they're roughly the same power and same investment, you shouldn't worry too much. The Lion King team, yes, I think you can beat the Lion King team because your single target damage uh, will take out key characters and you can kind of save Simba for the end of the fight if you choose. You also do have a lot of burst damage between Zerg and Buzz, so without Zerg, eh, you're just a team of four characters that's better than four random characters. With Zerg and Buzz, you end up maybe being able to take on some of the the better meta versions of teams. Uh, And on defense, they're going to require, again, a little bit of respect. They're not particularly terrible on offense or defense, but they're not particularly good. Overall, if I had to give this team a rating from, you know, S to trash, as my rating system tends to go, I would call it somewhere a little above average. Like, maybe if you took five Downtown Heroes characters that weren't Toy Story, like Scrooge McDuck, Anger, Judy Hopps, Sully, you know, if you took them, this team would be better than them. But compared to some of the best teams in the game, uh, the Kingdom team, the Downtown Villains, they they leave a little to be desired. The fact that they're very modular in their spells and that certain spells can work with them a little bit better, like Infinity Sided Die will give everybody a bunch of debuffs on the other team, which will potentially help your characters, are great. But until the entire team is unlocked, they're not great. I would probably, scale of 1 to 10, give them a nice solid 7, 7 and a half uh, rating. They're missing a little bit. That said, if you do see a 4-star team and your characters are a little underpowered, in the earliest, earliest stages of the game, someone who may have wailed out and unlocked this team might be able to get, I don't know, a week or two's worth of advantage while you work on a better team to be able to beat them with, while you work on your Shan Yu, while you, I don't know, work on making sure your downtown villains are all five star, your Demona is doing okay. You know, there, as long as you're progressing this team because it's an event team, it's not as powerful as it should be. And because there's a character on this team that isn't technically on this team or available. Alternate fifths for this team would be a dedicated tank like Sully as a downtown hero character. But even then, the only good thing I can say about going really hard on this team is in the future, if there is an event that requires specifically downtown heroes at four or five star, at least you'll have four downtown heroes at four or five star, as well as Darkwing Duck, who you're getting every day from completing your dailies. So hopefully this video, which was very long, was very helpful to you. Uh, If you have any questions or comments, let me know. I would show gameplay right now, but it's going to be about a day before I unlock Bo Peep, and I'm going to probably end up doing that on my stream. Uh, If you don't know, uh, every Saturday, I stream Disney Sorcerer's Arena on Twitch at pretty much whenever I want, but you can usually find me at around 8 p.m. Eastern time online. This particular Saturday, I'll be doing a live tier list stream where I evaluate characters not only as they stand on their own, but in their teams, as well as where they're useful. Some characters are very good in PvP arena. Some characters are terrible in tower or four tower. So I'm going to give it all 50 some odd accessible characters in the game. I'm gonna give them a quick look, so feel free to stop by. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good night, have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.